Hello, boys and girls. This is Mr. Kizik, and this video today we're going to be learning about the seg about segments in geometry and, and the addition segment postulate, or segment addition postulate. So, how do we measure segments here? Well, one of the easiest way to do that is to measure segments right on the num number line. We can say that the distance between two points, in this case here, A and B, we can write it as the length, let me put that in black instead, length of line segment AB, or again, because you know we want to have some better notation than that, we can write the distance between A and B as just the letters A, B with nothing on top. Notice what I was saying before, how important it is with notation in geometry. We talked about in the past couple of days, three different things now that are almost the same thing, but there's subtle differences and those subtle differences mean, well, different things. So in this case here, the distance between A and B is four, right, if we count. One, two, three, four. Okay. Next section here, and this is a word that you're going to see a lot. We're going to be talking about a lot throughout the year congruence. So, what does congruent statements mean? If, congru if the distance between A and B is equal to the distance between C and D, then we can say that the segments are congruent because they have the same numerical var value and the same shape. This is written as line segment AB is, whoops, line segment AB is congruent to line segment CD. So the congruency symbol, let me just write a little bit bigger here, is this little squiggly line and then an equal symbol. That means congruent. So whenever I see that in geometry, that means everything's the same about it, the numerical value, the shape of it, whatever it may be. So in this case here, why are they congruent? Well, this distance is four and this is also four. That's why they are congruent. So what does the segment addition postulate tell us? Well, it tells us this. If we have three points, A, B, and C, such that these three points are collinear, again, what does collinear mean? It means all points are on the line. And let's say B was between the two points. Then it says, the distance from A to B plus the distance from B to C is equal to the distance from A to C. And that kind of makes sense, right? If you think of like, um, you know, one of those games, what is that snake game or whatever, where if I have a length here, let's say a three and this length is six, well, the total length would be the addition of those two segments. So let's look at a couple of examples here. So let's look at this first one. It says use this diagram PQR here. So it says PQ is nine, QR is 28, find PR. Notice too how I labeled my figure. That's something you kind of want to do for yourselves with a lot of these geometric problems that we do. You want to label your figure and it makes it nice and organized for yourself. All right, so if I want to find PR, well, Remember, if I just rewrite the postulate on top here, a part plus a part equals a whole thing. Well, here, a part, PQ, plus another part, QR, equals the whole thing, which is PR. Well, if I fill in the blanks here, PQ9 plus QR28 equals PR, which is what we're trying to find. So 9 plus 28 is going to give me uh, 37. Using the same uh, 
figure here again. Um, now this time it says QR is 17 and PR, this whole thing is 21. Let's find QR, uh, PQ. I still have the same formula on top, right? A part plus a part equals a whole thing. So PQ, that's what I'm trying to find. So let's just call that X plus QR, which is so 17, equals, now in this case we have PR, which is 21. Well, ladies and gentlemen, how do I find Q, uh, PQ, or in this case X? This is just solving an equation, an equation. I subtract 17 on both sides, and I get that PQ is 4. So that's the basic principle of the sigma addition postulate. Of course, you know, we got to add a little bit to this. So let's, let's do that. Let's add a little bit to it. Let's look at number three. Now they're throwing in some geometry here. So it says, if EG is 71, find the value of X. So for me, this is how I would label it to indicate that that's the entire length of EG. But, you know, you might have a different way of doing it. I'm going to rewrite the sigma addition postulate as it says up here. A part plus another part equals the whole thing. So where are my two parts? EF is my one part. And my other part is FG, so plus FG equals, well, what's my whole thing? My whole thing is EG. And apologize for the pen. Uh, but now, there's my setup. Now just fill in everything we know. What's EF? Well, it's 8x minus 17. Plus um, FG, 5x minus 3. Equals, what's EG? So EG was 71. Now this just becomes an algebraic equation where we're just going to combine like terms and whatnot. So 8x plus 5x is 13x. Negative 17 minus 3, negative 20 equals 71. Add 20 to both sides. I'll just do it over here. 13x equals 91. And then divide each side by 13, and I'm going to get what? That's right, 7. And you are done. That's all it said here. Yeah. Let's look at something uh, like number 4. Okay. So number 4 says if TV is 14x minus 8, so I'm just going to label that. Find TU. Well, I'm not going to set up my, diff my equation any differently, and that's a common mistake students usually do. They see, oh, I need to find TU, so that's why I need to set it equal to. Well, no. You want to set it equal to, well, what are my, or what's my part and part? What's my whole thing? So if I look here, well, what's my one part? TU. So T U plus what's my other part? U V equals what's my whole thing? T V. Again, all I just did was follow the postulate equation. I didn't change anything with it. Now I'm going to plug in what I know. T U is 9x plus 2. UV is 5, and TV is 14X minus 8. And all I'm going to do is solve for X, just like how you normally would. Um, let's see. This is going to be 7 right here. So I'm going to skip both steps here because I think you guys got this. Track 9X from both sides. I get 5X. 
I'm going to add 8 to the 7, I combine 2 and 5, and I get 15. And x is going to be 3. But is that my final answer, ladies and gentlemen? And the answer should be, well, no, not my final answer here, because what am I trying to find? I'm trying to find TU. So how does solving X help me find TU? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in that value of X3 into 9X plus 2. So TU is going to equal 9 times 3 plus 2, which gets me 29. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you would do a problem like that there. So just because it tells you to find a line segment that's not the entire thing doesn't mean we set it up any differently. And again, if it wants you to find a line segment, you got to solve for x first. Right. Moving on to the next thing here, this word midpoint. Well, what is the midpoint of a segment? Well, the midpoint... of a segment is a point that divides the segment, um, wow, in the segment into two congruent parts. Think about it like, let's say your house is in the middle of, between uh, Wawa and the school, well, that would mean the distance from your house to Wawa and the distance from your house to the school is exactly the same. So a line ray or segment that intersects a segment as many point is said to bisect the segment and it's called the segment Bisector. Why they call it that? Well, what does the prefix bi mean? It means two. That's in half. So if I look at this diagram here, which point is the midpoint? The answer would be B. Is the midpoint of line segment AC and a line, this is an L, I believe, here, is a segment bisector the word is bisector guarantee it is of uh, AC now how do we know that how do we know line L bisects uh, line segment AC another thing that was going to be very important throughout geometry are these little markings Whenever I see these little tick marks here and there's points around, that tells me A, B, and B, C are exactly the same thing. Okay. So if I look here, and oh, I okay, okay. Sorry, I saw this loading thing on my page and sometimes it doesn't write. Anyway, so in this case here, and with anything in geometry, you can only assume things in geometry if they tell you to assume it. So in this case here with number eight, there are no markings on the drawing. However, in directions, it says if Q is a midpoint PR, find the value of X. Okay. So if Q is a midpoint PR, what does that mean? Well, that means PQ is the same as QR. And then all I have to do is just plug in what I know. 7X minus 16 equals 4x plus 2. Uh, move things around. 3x equals 18. x is going to be equal to 6. And we're done. Now, if the question said uh, find PQ, you still find this, do the same setup, except then you would plug in 6 for 7x minus 16. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is segment 
midpoint segment addition postulate uh, for this section. So if you ever have any questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out to me and we will be discussing this next class. This is Mr. Kiesick signing off.